Okay, I didn't even know it was possible to be voted most clumsy and most athletic in high school. That shouldn't be a thing. If you get one, you should not be able to get the other. I did. <laughs> People ask me what I do, and I just kind of worry like I do track still. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm a pro track athlete. If anything, I thought I would have gone pro in soccer, I think, more. I didn't really know my potential in track. When you're with a heptathlete, you understand what we go through on a daily basis. Go, come on. How good do you want to be? <laughs> oh, boy. I think my love for running has grown dramatically because I was able to kind of see where it can take me. It's still so surreal. I'm living my dream that I've kind of always wanted. The Olympics are all that I'm committed to right now, to get a medal and, and be on that podium. I don't have the rookie excuse anymore. I was there at the trials last year, it was my first go at it, and that's over. Being able to compete at the Olympics is the goal, and I think my biggest fear is coming up short. Just drove away from AM for last time. So I've been in San Diego for the last four and a half years now. During the week, I'm full time in a dorm living in a residency program at Chula Vista Elite Training Center. I first met Annie in 2016 at the Olympic Trials. And I was like, wow, you know, like, I think this could be a pretty good thing. Unfortunately, when she showed up in January 2017, she did not look like the, the young lady that I saw at the Olympic Trials. <laughs> I think I came in to Chula Vista not prepared. I had taken it a little bit easier after 2016 trials. I did not come in in shape. When she showed up, I was like, whew, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, she struggled with probably one of the most basic 800 meter workouts there is. I was wheezing and I cried that day and I just remember being like, what did I sign up for? I don't know if I'm ready for this. Um, and there are a lot of days like that when I first got out to the center that first year. That transition year was definitely really hard, especially because I got injured like my second meet in. Um, I ruptured my plantar fascia, so I was out for like five months. So that was awful and hard and I've definitely come a long way, <laughs> let's just say that. <laughs> It's been a long four years to get her to where she is now. I mean, I remember those first couple heptathlons, you know, are ending in tears and just like, why am I even doing this? And <laughs> so it can be a, a struggle sometimes. I think especially when you have a lot of success early and you think that that's just going to be the road. It's just going to be smooth sailing. And her road, I think, luckily, has been bumpy. And I don't think if it hadn't been bumpy, she'd be where she is today because along that bumpy road, she made a lot of discoveries about herself. Training at the center, I think, has just challenged me in so many ways. Um, I think it's the perfect environment to be successful. It can be a lot sometimes living on site and it's kind of like never leaving your place of work. Um, but at the same time, it puts you in a situation where you can put all of your focus into the sport. And I think it's really pushed me and given me the resources to learn from the best. I remember when I found out that the Olympics were gonna be postponed and just kind of feeling numb and unsure and sad. I got depressed for like probably two months. There's just all these like questions of your identity when you lose the thing you've been working towards for four years. I found my sports psychologist, and he's made just a world of difference where I don't think I would have been as mentally tough and strong um, in 2020 if I, if I hadn't gone through everything in COVID. I kind of switched my perspective thinking like, this could be the best thing that happens to me. I get another year to get better. I think I really learned in that time how badly I really did want this and this goal and this dream of mine. 
I think the extra year of mental preparation really helped Annie. Physically, I think she was ready to go. She set, I think, the seventh or eighth best mark ever for, for an indoor pentathlon. The development of the mental aspect to track and field is kind of what they always say is that one to two percent, which is the difference between making teams, not making teams, winning medals, not winning medals, is, is really that mental game at the top. I was going to the trials without a heptathlon score, but I knew I was ready. I was stronger physically and mentally than I'd ever been. And I just decided, like, I'm gonna trust that. When we had sat down for our goal setting session, she told me, my goal is to win the Olympic trials. I said, that's a big one. You do realize what that means. You have to beat Kendall. You have to beat Erica. These are girls that have made Olympic teams, who have been winning US titles, you know, for the last four or five years, and you want to take it to them. And, and she's like, yeah. So Javelin is notoriously my weaker event. I knew I had a good chance if I could get 40 meters. And then I threw my first one, it was 45 meters. And <laughs> I was just like, I went down and I almost started crying because at that moment I was like, oh my gosh, I think I made the team. And we did. At that point, Erica, Kendall, and I all knew we were on the team. And then I realized, like, I'm not, I not only made the team, but I think I could win it. <laughs> we were sitting, waiting for the results to pop up in anticipation, and my name is at the top of the leaderboard. And, and then I saw the number 6-7, and I, was, it just, I just got flooded with emotion because it was just truly all of the ups and downs and the hardships and the moments of self-doubt and uncertainty along the last five years, I just felt like it was worth it. A lot of us, now that we've made the team, are kind of like, oh, we can breathe a little bit and just have fun and train hard. Because we made the team and now it's like the fun part. We get to go compete with the best in the world. I don't think I have much fears. I think I just want to continue to push myself and see what I can do in this sport and see how well I can execute my events. She's learned over the last four years, you know, how to adapt. Where one, they have the confidence in their cues, confidence in their training that they can just go out and execute a plan. I think Annie has a really good chance to, to win a medal. I've dreamt of this moment my entire life. And I'm just so, so, so blessed and grateful to be part of it.